Hello everybody and welcome to this short tutorial on how to use the logging and parameter framework for the crazy fly. And the logging framework can be used to download data when the crazy fly is running and flying. And the parameter framework can be used to set variables in the crazy fly while it's running and flying. So first of all, this is the virtual machine we're seeing that you can download from our webpage. It contains most of the development environment for all our projects. And today we'll be using it to look at the firmware and look at the PC client. So first of all, we need to go down here and pass the BitCrazy Crazy Radio USB dongle into the virtual machine. And let's go ahead and start up the client. We also have a video here that shows the crazy fly. So let's go ahead and power that on. So the logging framework and the parameter framework works in a way where you can select variables in the firmware that you want to log and you want to be able to set. And when you connect, like I, when I press connect now, it will download a table of content of all the variables that you've set in the in the firmware. So let's press connect. And now when it switches to disconnect, we can go into tabs and log talk. And here we can see a list of all the variables that are available for logging right now. So what we want to show in this short tutorial is how to add your own variables to this logging. So first of all, let's go ahead and disconnect and we'll start up Eclipse. So what we're going to look at is adding some logging for the temperature. Now the temperature is already being logged, but what we want to do is to add some additional logging and logging the temperature to Fahrenheit. So let's go in here and search for the temperature. So first of all, for the logging to work, you need to declare a global variable that you can add to the logging table of content. So let's add a variable that we call temperature Fahrenheit. Then let's see here where it's the normal temperature here is being read when we read read data from a pressure sensor. So let's add a row here where we calculate the Fahrenheit as well. Like that. So for the logging to make sense, you need to write data to a variable that you then will read at certain intervals from the client. And now that we have a variable, let's add it to the logging. So we use the macros log group start and log group end. And these will declare a group. Uh, log group stop, sorry. This will declare a group of variables. Um, and let's go ahead and add some variables to that. So first of all, the first parameter to the log add macro is the type for the variable and the temperature is being logged in float. The second parameter is what the variable should be called on the client side. So let's add C for Celsius. And the last parameter is the variable itself, or a reference to a variable. So let's add temperature. Let's go ahead and add Fahrenheit as well. Like that. So here down in the lower left corner, we have some build targets. So let's go ahead and build for the radio bootloader. And then we have a target for flashing using the crazy radio. So just double click the target, reset the crazy fly. 
and the flashing stars. And you can see now that it's in bootloader mode. And this takes a little bit longer than uh, running it with a virtual machine because of the USB performance. Okay, here we go. Um, so let's switch back to the client and we search for a crazy fly again. Connect. And what it's doing now is again, it's downloading the new updated talk. And here we have a new, the group that we added called temp. And we have the two variables, CNF for Celsius and Fahrenheit. You can see the ID, which isn't that useful, but more useful, you can see the type of a variable. Now, once you have added some data to the logging, you also want to visualize it in some way. So let's first of all go to tabs. We can select the plotter. And on the plotter tab, you can plot data from logging configurations that you have added in the client. So let's go to logging configurations. This shows all the talk, the log talk. So let's go and find temp. Let's go ahead and add a whole temp group. And the logging framework works by pushing data from the crazy fly to the client at certain intervals. So let's go ahead and set the, an interval of 10 milliseconds and call this logging configuration temperature. Let's save that. So still on the plotter tab, we go to plotting and select temperature. We can see we have, we're logging the two variables, temp C and F, and here we can see the values. And if I try to, let's see, put my finger here, you can see that the data is changing. Okay, so let's have a look at the parameters as well. And the same thing goes for parameters. When we connect, we download the talk. So let's have a look at the talk for the parameters. Here we can see what parameters we have, what groups, the type, and also the access. Some parameters like the ID of a microcontroller are read-only, and some are read-write, the ones we want to set. And the last column here is value. So let's add one to the firmware and see how that's done. We disconnect, switch over to Eclipse again. And we want, what we want to do is to add one parameter that enables and disables the motors. So for the parameters, it's the same thing as the variable that goes. We need to have a variable that we can edit from the PC. Enable motors, let's call it that. And let's set it true by default. Then we go to the loop where we do the control, uh, sensor acquisition, and then we set distribute power to the motors. So here we want to see if the thrust is over zero and if the motors are enabled, we set the power to the motors, otherwise we set them to zero. So we have our variable and now we want to add it to the parameter framework as well, so we can change it from the PC side. So same as for the logging, we create a group that's called Param group start, and we call this MC for motor control. And we stop the group. And just like for the logging, we add parameters to the group, Param add. We add the type, and for this, in this instance, we have a Boolean, so we're going to set it as uint8. The next one is the name the parameter will have on the client side. So let's call it enable. And last is the reference to the variable enable motors. So that's all we have to do. 
we build it and we flush it using radio bootloader. So let's switch back to client. Connect and just to be on the safe side so the crazy fly doesn't fly away while we're doing the video, we'll switch this to 30%. And we still don't have any input device, so we'll pass through the Sony PlayStation. You can see it's detected here. And we also have the video of a crazy fly. So let's push the thrust a little bit. You can see that it's turning. So now after connecting, the parameters have been downloaded again, the new TOC, and we can see the new TOC contains the motor control, the MC, the group that we added, and it contains the enable variable, uint8, read-write, and the value is 1, so it's true. We can still turn the motors. So we'll push the motors, we'll go here, and we'll change this to 0. And when I hit enter, the parameter will be sent to the crazy fly. Cuts the motor. And you can see that we still have thrust input, but the motors are now still. So let's send one, and they take off again. Thanks for watching this tutorial on the Crazy Fly logging and parameter framework. And just a short story behind this, it was put in, so actually during development, so you can easily tune, for instance, regulation, different parameters, and so you can log what's happening when you're actually flying around. And in the next video, we'll show you a bit more about the Python API and how to add parameters and logging variables to the UI design.